Hey, and welcome back to another Adobe After Effects tutorial. This is Taylor, and I'll be showing you how to create these three seamless backgrounds in which you can use in your upcoming video project. Before we get started, please help me out by giving this video a like and clicking that red subscribe button down below so that you don't miss out on any future videos. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started with our first background. So in this background, we'll start up a new composition, title it Polygon Background. Keep it at a duration of 12 seconds, click OK. From here, we'll come up to the Shape tool, or Rectangle tool, and then come on down to the Polygon tool. Uh, click in the center of your composition, hold down Shift, and we'll create a pentagon like that. Uh, I'm gonna keep a pentagon for this tutorial. However, if you wanna change it to something like a triangle, what you can do is come on down here to the Polystar, open up the properties, come over here to Polystar Path, and then where it says points, knock it down to three and it turns it into a triangle. But for this, I'm gonna keep it a pentagon. All right, and we're gonna set the fill to none and set the stroke and bump that up to 25 pixels. Uh, from here, what we'll do is come to the align tab, center it up, and then up here where we've got our anchor tool, hold down control and click twice. And that's gonna put the anchor right in the center of our polygon here. Click on shape layer and then click control shift C and we'll just pre-compose this and title it shape. From here, open up our shape comp and then what we're gonna do is click control K to adjust the width and height. And so we'll start off with 400 by 400. I'll unlock the aspect ratio here. Now we'll go to 400 to 400, and that should be just fine. Click OK. Uh, close out of your shape comp. And so now we've got our object right in the center. From here, we're gonna come over to effects and presets and search up motion tile. Click and drag and put that onto our shape composition. And then from here, we're going to increase the output width so that it covers up our screen like so. And then we're going to also increase the output height. We may need to adjust these numbers in a moment, but for now, this gives us a good place to start. So now what we need to do is make this a 3D layer. So we're gonna come over here and click this box. And now click on shape, click R for rotation. And now we're going to adjust the X, Y, and Z axis here. So let's go ahead and Negative 35 for X, five is okay. And then for Z, we go something like that, okay? So from here, we'll animate our background. So what we can do is create a keyframe for tile center at the beginning, click end on your keyboard, and then adjust the Y value so that the shapes all move in a downward motion. And then, you can adjust these numbers as you see fit. We're just gonna bring her down to about there, okay? And then one other thing is that when the 3D layer is activated, it can slow down your computer. So what we can do is adjust our resolution. I'm gonna bring it down to a quarter just so that uh, our workflow remains at a consistent speed. And now here's what we have. So far looking okay, now let's go ahead and add a background by clicking Control Y on your keyboard and title our new solid background. And then from here in effects and presets, we'll search up gradient ramp, bring that into our background here. And then I'm going to adjust where the ramp starts and finishes. And then we can change the colors to something that you like. Bring the background layer below your shape layer so you've got something like that. Uh, another thing we can do is come into the shape, adjust our stroke color, so pink like that. And so now we have something that looks like that. So now here's where we stand. All right, cool. Now, it still looks a little stale to me, so a couple other things we're gonna do here is come into our shape layer. And what we can do is click on R for rotation, come to the beginning by clicking home on your keyboard, 
and make a keyframe for rotation and then click end to go to the end of our composition and I'm going to make this do one full rotation throughout the composition. So now what we have is all of our uh, pentagons are going to rotate throughout the composition. Starting to look a little better here. We're going to do another thing is come over here to effects, look up glow, and then bring that into our shape layer. We'll keep the first glow settings the same. However, though, we'll duplicate this glow and then come over here to glow threshold, bump it up to 100%, and then glow radius, we'll bring that up to say 60. So that now our pentagons have a nice little glow to it. To now give us something that looks like this. And then one last thing we're going to add to this is an adjustment layer. And then come over here to effects and presets and search up optics compensation. Bring that into your adjustment layer. Uh, check the box where it says reverse lens distortion. And then set the field of view to 75. And now here's what we have. Now for this background, we're going to need to get our ellipse tool out. Click in the center and hold down shift to create a perfect circle. We're gonna make the stroke white and then align to center. Once again, come up here to the pan behind tool, hold down control and click twice to bring the anchor point right in the center. And then what we're gonna do is add a repeater by coming over to add repeater and then open up the repeater properties, open up the transform properties and then set our position to zero. And then from here, what we're gonna do is adjust the scale so that we have something that we like. And then you can adjust this to your taste. And then from here, we're going to adjust the copies so that we've got plenty of them to last throughout our background here. And now that we have our copies made, what we need to do is adjust the offsets so that it fills up the screen like this, so negative 10 will work and then create a keyframe at the beginning and then click end on your keyboard and then we'll go to say negative 25 and now here's where we're at we've got something that looks like that okay off to a good start we'll go ahead and close this up and then we're going to create this into a 3d layer and click r on your keyboard and then we're going to adjust the x rotation Maybe say negative 30. Y rotation. You know what, I'm gonna adjust the X rotation a little bit more. Say negative 50, negative 25 like that, okay? So now, it comes in an angle like that. Now let's go ahead and add a background. So control Y for new solid, title it background, click OK, come over here to effects and presets, gradient ramp, click and drag onto the background, and then once again you can create colors that you like, for me we'll go ahead and go with something like that, and now what we need to do is click and drag and put our background on the bottom, and then on our shape layer, uh, we need to adjust that, so what we need to do is come on down here to toggle switches and modes. And then for mode, click overlay. And so now here's our background. And one other thing we can do is, let's say you want to add a title to this. Once again, create another solid. And we'll just title it black. Click OK. And then bring it in between the shape plate and the background. And then with it selected, click T for opacity. And then bring it down to say 30%. And so it darkens it just a little bit so that whatever titles you have can be easily seen, something like this. And now comes time for question of the day. How do you plan to use one of these three motion backgrounds in one of your upcoming video projects? I'd love to know in the comments below. All right, so for this final background, we'll come up here to the rectangle tool and then click and drag so we come over down to the polygon. Click in the center, hold down shift, Create a polygon, adjust our properties so that we make it into a triangle. And then over here, we're going to align it to the center. 
and then coming over here to the anchor point tool, hold down control and click twice to bring our anchor point right into the center. Uh, the next thing we need to do is to add a repeater. Open up our repeater property, set the position down to zero, and then adjust your scale to something that you see fit. I'm gonna go ahead and set it to a value of 60. And then notice that our triangles aren't quite in the center, so the way we can do that is adjust our anchor points here. So we've got something that looks like that. Then the next thing we need to do is increase our copies. Something like that. And then the next thing we need to do is create a keyframe for offset at the beginning. Click end on your keyboard and then adjust the offset. So now we have something that looks like this. So now the next thing we'll do is we're gonna add a trim pass. So come over here to add, trim pass. Open up our trim pass properties. Starting at the beginning of our composition, we're gonna create a keyframe for end. And then we're gonna go a second in half in time. And then create another keyframe here. Go back to the beginning. And at our first keyframe, we're going to set the end value to zero. And so now we're left with something that looks like this. And then one other thing we can do is open up our repeater one properties and adjust the rotation so that they each rotate like so. I want to do something maybe like that. Let's see what we have. Well, now the next thing we'll do is create our background. Control Y, background. Click OK. Effects and presets. We'll make yet again another gradient ramp. Click and drag onto the background layer. Something like that. Okay, click and drag the background so it's beneath your shape layer. So now here's what we have. And now what we can do is adjust the mode of the shape layer to overlay. And then come over here to effects and presets and type in glow. Bring that onto our shape layer. And for the first glow, we'll keep all the properties as is. Control D uh, to make a second glow. Uh, bring up the threshold to let's say 100%. And then glow radius, say 80. And so now here's what we have. And then one other thing we can do is once again, create another adjustment layer. And then effects and presets, look up optics compensation. Bring that into our adjustment layer. Uh, check the box where it says reverse lens distortion, field of view 75. So now we have this. And once again, thank you so much for sticking around to this part of the video. Please drop a comment down below letting me know on what future videos you like to see from me. And if you haven't done so already, please give this video a like and click the red subscribe button down below so that you don't miss out on any future videos. And from here on out, have a good one.